Hey, hey, a brand new episode of the Happy Productive Podcast is about to begin. It's time to be inspired by simple and actionable solutions for you and your business. If you're an established entrepreneur or just laying down the first brick of your future empire, the mantra is the same. We will flip any failure into a positive and use it to our advantage. This show is all about turning coal into diamonds. With the right plan and mindset, anything is possible. I'm Jennifer John, your host, business coach, and founder of Best Planner Ever. And I'm here to help you achieve all your ambitious goals. Success is closer than you think. Let's do this. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of the Happy Productive Podcast. My guest today is Ryan Wilson, the founder and CEO of Team Trust Productions. Welcome, Ryan. I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. It's nice to join you. Yes. Now, here's why I asked Ryan to be on the show, because he is like a video production expert. I am not. (laughs) I have started to tap into using more and more video in my business. But I know that this is just like such a huge, important area for business owners. And so we're going to dive into that. But before we do, Ryan, would you just take a few minutes and just share with everybody a bit about your story? You know, what did you go through to be here, you know, today talking about the things that we're going to be talking about today? I would just love to hear, I know everybody would love to hear a little bit about your story. Uh, Yeah, I mean, there are so many different things that kind of happened to, to lead me to talking with you, Jennifer, and the listeners. But I think the main thing is that, you know, I grew up in the middle of cornfields in central Illinois. You know, I was surrounded by cornfields, and it seemed like I was the only guy in town in a wheelchair, which is fine, but uh, my only knowledge of disability was coming from what I was seeing on the TV as I was watching NBA games. So naturally, when you watch a lot of basketball, you see a lot of commercials, especially hospital commercials, with kids who even look just like me. But they're not me, but they look just like me. And you know what? They're never happy. They're always sad, trapped in a hospital, and surrounded by you know, family and friends and doctors. And I've been in that position and it's not fun. And so it didn't exactly, you know, provide fuel to to do big things. So when I went to college, I went to the University of Illinois and they're known for having a pretty solid reputation in adaptive sports, so like wheelchair basketball, wheelchair racing. When I saw people who looked like me, my size, in a wheelchair, with six-pack abs, benching a couple hundred pounds, man, what what are they doing that I'm not doing? This is ridiculous. So I just kind of embedded myself in their worlds. And as I did that, I realized how much of a, a disconnect there is between the reality of many individuals with disabilities and the way their narrative is cast in the media and in any sort of video. And so I created, long story short, uh, Team Trust Productions to not only tell authentic stories of the disability community, but also help people who have valuable resources get now. So there you go. That's the whole story. That is such an amazing story. And I'm curious, like, so what, like, made you choose video? Like, you could have gone into all kinds of different things. And so what was it about video that really appealed to you? Well, I initially wanted to do play-by-play sports announcing, and I did some of that. I realized that there's a lot of magic and storytelling. So it's the ability to make a connection with somebody, build a relationship. And so I came across a, a very strong mentor in college who was a bit multimedia journalist and, and 
he kind of shifted me away from play by play to video storytelling. And I like how in videos you can see things that you can't see in text. So true. And so talk to me a little bit about the logistics of that. Like, how does that work? How are, how do you have a video production company and you're in a wheelchair? Like, how does that work? Do you work with yeah, other people? All, like, yeah, how does that work? It's all magic. It doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, the reality is a lot of the cameras we use are heavier than I can, than I can lift. I mean, some are 20 pounds, and then when you add on a mount or a light or whatever, I mean, they could be 30 pounds. And so I'm not necessarily down for that right now, but I can find people who who are. And so we have a lot of uh, assistants, team members uh, with, with all sorts of, uh, you know, fun gear. And so they assist me with the shooting. You know, I kind of facilitate the interviews and the shoots. And, but when it comes to the camera work, you know, my, my team members help me out and they do the heavy lifting, uh, literally. So. Very nice. And so are you able to do you work within just a single state? Are you able to work nationwide? I mean, what does that look like? And and I'm thinking like from, we have business owners that are listening to this from all over the country. And so like, regardless of where you're located, if you're thinking about like getting into some kind of video production, like what does that look like as far as like finding a company to work with? Yeah, so, you know, with, with Team Trust, we work all over the country because it's uh, it's a very it's not all that hard to pull off. I mean, there are videographers all over the place, uh, so you know we we can find a good team member from that. I think a lot of uh, organizations tend to Google for videographers. You know, they'll type in local videographers or editors and just stick with that. But um, I mean, yeah, no, it, it's it's a good time and. We're growing every day. That's so awesome. And so what should somebody who is, well, let's let's start with the kinds of videos that you can create. And so like if you have not created any kind of video for your business and you're just like, hey, everybody says I need to be in video, which you do. Um, like what kinds of videos do you create? And then how can those videos be used in a business? Yeah, so with, with Team Trust, we... We do all sorts of event recaps and promos. Those, I think, are really easy videos to land because it's it's primarily let's have this event filmed. Let's have people interviewed, you know, maybe a staff member, people who are benefiting from our organization, and there you go. But beyond that, we do overview videos, so like highlighting what the organization does kind of on a broad basis. Um, and then, you know, we work a lot with nonprofits. And so there are some fundraising videos in there. And so I think a lot of times, whenever you do a video, you need to not only do it well, you know, incorporate some emotion and strong storytelling, but also really distribute that thing like crazy. A lot of organizations will just post it on Facebook once and expect the money to pour in. And for some reason, it doesn't work like that. You know, some people will get a few thousand of views, but how does that translate into dollars? I don't know. Uh, so you just got to gotta put it on Facebook, of course, and any other platform, but also reference it in presentations and proposals so people can see what you've done, uh, not just read it. It's a big difference. Yeah. What would you say for somebody who's out there ready to work with a video production company? Like what are some of the red of the red flags or things to avoid to fall into the trap of like hiring the wrong video production company? Hmm. You have some good questions. But I have answers. I have come Yay. prepared just for you. Um <laughs> I think uh, a big problem is that uh, videographers will not be entirely passionate or committed to the cause. So, for example, if we're 
working with the nonprofits and, you know, and they have a disability focus. We're always looking for videographers who are, are passionate about serving the disability community because then they'll have that extra motivation to go above and beyond. It's, it's not all that hard to find a videographer who will, you know, take a few shots, interview somebody, and then ask for a paycheck. Mm -hmm. We don't exactly do that, you know? So I would certainly recommend that for anybody when you're looking for a videographer to guarantee many things, you know, look at their previous work, look at their website, see what they've done, see if it aligns with what you're looking for. Why not check out some reviews and then see if they can guarantee more than just footage. So can they guarantee timeliness, respect, interviews, all that good stuff? And if they fail, you don't owe them a penny. Hold them accountable. It's not just about a paycheck. It's about you. Oh, there that's so, so powerful. And you guys, so those of you listening, we do a lot of video, not a lot that, that's professionally produced, the way that I've started to kind of tap into this is we had a documentary done last year and the film crew came out and they were with us during one of our retreats and the documentary that they came up with was just absolutely brilliant, like absolutely loved it. So then I'm like, man, this video thing is awesome. Let me go have a speaker reel created. And so I paid a different company to do my speaker reel. And it was absolutely the most God awful piece of crap I'd ever seen. And anybody listening, you will not see it because <laughs> I scrapped it. I'm not going to use it. And the difference between the quality now, I, I, granted, I didn't pay the same amount of money. I paid a lot more for the documentary, even though I think we got a really good, really good deal on it for what they did. And the difference in quality was so substantial, like a well done documentary. It's almost just like you just get so sucked into it. You just want to watch it. It's engaging. The speaker reel, I was just like, oh my God, like 30 seconds in, I'm like, can I just please stop watching my own speaker reel? Because this is so awful. And it really ended up being more of like a slideshow and a voiceover and not a very, not very well done. It didn't feel like a fully like put together what it should be. And so the reason why I'm even sharing this is that if you've had a bad experience with video, it's not the video. It was probably the company, the people, right, that you chose to work with. Because I do think that this is a very artistic thing. You've mentioned several times there's an art to really um, telling a story and that when it's done well, it just makes all the difference. Yeah. No, I think that resonates with a lot of people. Thank you for sharing. I think uh, a lot of videos are produced, but how many of those really stick with you? Most of them are kind of forgotten immediately. The strong ones make you feel, they, they tell a story and you feel connected. I I did watch your documentary, Jennifer. Um, you did. And it was, it was good. Um, it, I haven't forgotten it. So no, I'm glad you did it. And and yeah, so I would just I would just always keep in mind, you know, what is this story really about? You know, it's not necessarily about flexing your organization's muscles. I mean, it doesn't really do much. How are you changing the lives of the people you serve? It's, it's about them. There yeah. you go. It is. Well, you saying that means a lot more to me because I'm an amateur in this space when it comes to video. You're the pro. So if you watched it and you liked it, that makes me feel good. I'm like, well, I really liked I it, but what do I know? <laughs> you did a good job. <laughs> yes, thank you. I appreciate that. So one of the things that you mentioned um, about the way that you kind of got started was working with more people who were disabled and more of the nonprofits. And I know that you have a really, really informative guide on your website of how to market to disabled people, because I think that there's a lot of times that people don't know any better, they haven't been educated, and it can be very easy to actually insult or offend a disabled person. And so would you mind just sharing with us maybe some some good, a couple of just do's and don'ts that people should know about when you're marketing to the disabled community? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people 
get frustrated. I think the disability community gets frustrated by people who don't have disabilities because how many buildings have steps outside, Jennifer? I mean, if they have steps, I mean, technically I can't get in, but I can find a way if I want to get in. So there, there's no shortage of frustrations for the disability community. But on the other hand, I think people who don't have disabilities, generally speaking, want to help out. And they too get frustrated because nobody's happy. So I think the the main message that we always communicate with Team Trust and the main message that I always try to get across is just listening. You know, it's one thing to listen to somebody, but it's another to actually follow through with what they're recommending or saying. You know, I can give you all sorts of examples of how people carry me onto airplanes. Um, I can tell them, I can give them a whole 15 minute presentation, but it won't matter because they're not paying attention. They might have heard me, but they're still going to do it the wrong way because they're projecting what they think I need versus what I actually need. And so that's kind of the biggest one, I think, just acknowledging what the person is telling you and, and, and understanding that, you know, some things are different than what you think. You don't have to lift me the way you think I need lifted. So just be open to trying new things. And, you know, we all mess up. But the biggest thing is to just listen, be open, and hopefully you get better. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting. I, I'm i not disabled, but there was several years ago I'd broken my foot and I had to be no weight bearing for two months. And during that time, my husband and I had to travel from New York to California for a wedding that was taking place. And the wedding was on a cruise ship. And I had to be in a wheelchair to go through the airports because I couldn't be weight bearing on this foot. And I had to be, I, I'd never been in a wheelchair before. And I'm like, it was this whole new experience. Like literally what you said about, you know, the steps in a building, like you just for a person who's not disabled, you don't even think about it. There's so many things that we take for granted of just like, yeah, of course, I just walk up the steps to the building. No, not a big deal. But when you're in a wheelchair, and you're like, hey, I got to get there, I have to get through this airport, I need to get through the, the taxi to get to the cruise ship, I need to get on the cruise ship, I need to go through security. It's like, I need to navigate in the room, just the hallway is so narrow. <laughs> How do I get down this hallway? And if somebody's coming in the other direction, it was really an eye opening experience. I handled it with as much grace as I could, Ryan, I know there were some F bombs in there as well. There really and truly were. But one of the coolest things is that I started to notice other people in wheelchairs that I seriously, I think that I, you just go through a day and you don't even notice. But when you're in one, you start to look around and go, wait a second, like there's a guy in a wheelchair and there's a woman in a wheelchair. And actually there's a lot of people like in wheelchairs and it was fun. The fun part was like, I think there's like a secret, I think you guys have like a secret community. Cause like you'd see like a person, like when I was in my little wheelchair and I'd make eye contact with somebody else in a wheelchair and we'd like give a thumbs up or give a little wink or a little like, hi, how are you? Um, that was the cool part of like, wow, there's like this whole community here of people who are in wheelchairs is just one example. And so it was really and truly eye opening for me. I think that I think everybody should be in a wheelchair for at least a period of time. <laughs> give it a <laughs> shot. See what give happens. it a shot, right? Experience it because it really and truly was a very eye-opening experience. And it made me incredibly grateful for what I have and what I'm able to do. And I think that we have to bring that into our businesses and we can bring that into our marketing and we can we can listen. Like what you said, it's a little thing. Just listen to what I'm trying to say and and get out of your own head and your own stuff and your own stuff and just listen to that person who's in front of you because they're a person just like you are, just have a little bit a little bit of different needs. Yeah. No, that 
sounds about right. You know, whenever I spent so much time with the the Team USA wheelchair racing team, they're just human beings in wheelchairs. They can do just about anything. It might be just a little different, and that's totally okay with me. I mean, it looks cool, so no complaints. Do you think that your disability has and contributed to you being a better storyteller with your video production company? That's really interesting. Um, possibly. I think uh, the secret community that we have that she mentions, <laughs> I, I think there, there really is a strong connection between individuals who have disabilities. So just all of us in the community, I, I think there's just some sense of understanding there that it's hard to communicate with words. It's like you know, we, we acknowledge what we've all been through. Uh, you know, we've all experienced some barriers and, and, you know, somebody treating us differently because we're in a chair or whatever. So I think the, the one thing that has, has really struck me is the connection I've always had with just about anybody with a disability. And I think that sense of connection is something I try to put in each video we do because it's not just about disability, it's it's building a connection. And when that connection is there, you can do about anything together. Yeah, I do. I think that it, it, it contributes to you having such a unique perspective and your ability to see things in a different way or see things that another person can't necessarily see them. And the fact that you can then translate that into a beautiful story on video, like I, that's just, it's so cool, Ryan. It's so cool. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm <laughs> glad you feel that way. <laughs> uh, and did you actually race wheelchairs? You were on the team? Well, I... I thought about it. I've never been in a racing chair, but I've seen people race marathons and go 20 miles per hour. I have, I have raced people in my power chair, if that counts. Um, uh, that totally counts. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I was in the hospital. So the best place <laughs> to race. No, I, I have not counted out racing in a chair as a sport, but, uh, Right now, we just have other priorities. Yes. Oh, that's uh, that's so great. Uh, racing in the hospital. I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie myself. So anything you can turn into a race, I love it. There you go. Yeah, I like it. Very nice. All right. So those of you who are listening who, I don't know about you, but I'm just like, oh, I, I want to go create 10 videos now with Ryan at Team Trust. So if you're thinking, hey, I want to talk to Ryan, I want to learn more about his video production company, Ryan, where can everybody find you? Yeah. So you can check out our website. It's teamtrustproductions.com. You can just Google Team Trust video and even my name and they all show up. And on our website, we have all sorts of tips to make your video stronger, uh, more memorable, more of a money generator, and also that guide that we talked about on how to, you know, include the disability community in your marketing. So go there, hang out, and learn a lot. I love it. And you can work with me too, why not? Yeah. Hey, that's, that's not so bad. I like it. (laughs) <laughs> fabulous Ryan thank you so much for being here with me today you guys we will also put that in the show notes the links to Ryan's website Team Trust Productions please go check him out download the free guide reach out I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you Ryan thank you so much for being here with me today I really appreciate it of course Jennifer thank you and thank you listeners awesome you guys that's it get out there take something from today take some action from it Get out there and have a happy, productive day. I'll see you guys later. Bye. I hope you found today's episode of the Happy Productive Podcast inspiring. Every successful business is formed by a set of small, consistent, and attainable steps. If you want to learn more, come visit us at jenniferdawncoaching.com to take your next step and learn how to meet your business goals. 
On our website, you're going to find free resources along with links to the life-changing coaching programs that have transformed the lives of so many of our clients, including the Coaching Academy and our Unbreakable Retreats. Many of them started their journey by listening to this podcast. That's it. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for our next episode. Thank you.